Wow. It's mid-January and I'm outside without a coat in downtown Indianapolis, but it's worth it because today we're visiting Robert's Camera, an incredible little camera store with two locations in Indianapolis, but serving the world. Not only are they specialists in new camera gear, but also in the used camera market. We're gonna give you an interview today with Bruce Pullman, the owner of Robert's Camera, and we'll look back at the 50 years with Robert's photo and what it took to make Robert's what it is today and how they changed on an ongoing basis to adapt to the changing marketplace that we're all experiencing. I think you'll enjoy this interview and more than anything else, I hope you enjoy learning a little bit more about what the camera business is all about and how Roberts has figured out how to make a great niche market out of this. Hi, I'm Kevin Raber with the Loomless Landscape and thanks for coming by today. I am in downtown Indianapolis at Roberts Photo and I'm sitting here with Bruce Pullman, the owner of Roberts Photo. And I think we're going to have a very interesting conversation. I've known Bruce for quite a while and this is an opportunity to listen to what it takes to stay in business for over 50 years. And uh, Bruce? Well, I'd like to say that I've only been in business for 44 years. So I can tell you what it takes to stay in business for 44 years. Um, my parents started this business in 1957 and uh, we'd have to bring them back to, to find out about the 50 years or more. <laughs> but uh, this business has been an, an ongoing business in uh, many forms over the course of these uh, 57 years we've been here and, and in various locations. Um, we have been a business of adaptation, changing times. My father started this as a, uh, frankly, as a retail jewelry store. Uh, had nothing to do with cameras. Uh, and, uh, and it progressed into the catalog showroom business in the mid 60s, which was uh, a business where we sold not only jewelry, we sold small appliances, we sold luggage, uh, just about uh, sporting goods, you name it, we sold it. And one of the things we sold during that period of time, we started into the camera business. Now you might say, how, did, how, did, you know, how does this mesh? Well, we bought a canned catalog and one of the sections we could buy was a camera section. And my father said, maybe we can sell cameras. <laughs> and so, so we, we looked at this and we had 12 pages of cameras and accessories in our catalog. And that's how we started in the camera business. Okay. I moved to Indianapolis in uh, 2002 uh, from New York and I was always used to the big guys. But uh, immediately when I needed camera gear, I came in and somehow or other we met and kind of developed a relationship. Uh, you eventually became a dealer. We had some adventures together in, in, in Europe. Absolutely. We, we will talk Absolutely. about the, the crazy day at the racetrack. But, uh, you know, one of the things I've always been impressed with is the difference between Roberts and all the other camera stores I've visited. And I've visited a lot of them. Sure. There, sure. there has always been a, a personal relationship, a feeling of that down-home hardware story kind of place where you know you want to go there on a Saturday morning, have your cup of coffee, and just shoot the breeze with the guys there. Because it's what this place is. There's, there's people that are here that have been here as long as I can remember. You can always come in here and just have a casual conversation. Nobody's trying to push you out of the way, onto something new, into something different. And when you really need to know about the product, the camera, or, you know, which is better, or this brand or that brand, what would you suggest for this lens? I was thinking about this one. No, you really ought to think about this one. Have you looked at this? It really has always been a great experience. You walk out feeling good, but you know, I think a lot of it exudes from you. Well, uh, it's a great experience for, for a lot of reasons. One of the reasons is, is we try and sell the customer what he wants, not what we want to sell. I mean, that's, that's the, the very first thing is, you know, you walk into so many of these stores and you say, hey, I'm looking for a Canon XYZ. And the first thing the salesman says is, have you looked at the Sony? That isn't what we do. No. You want to see a, an XYZ, we're happy to show it to you, happy to talk to you about it. If you want to see something else, 
we'll be happy to show you that. But we don't sell off. We try and sell the customer correctly. Correct. And we then try and let him know as much about the product as, as he or she wants to know. Um, it's important not to go deeper than, a, than they want. And uh, yet, it, you're right about coming in on a Saturday morning. It's, uh, it's, a, it's like the old hardware store. Hmm. It is. You can come in, you can hold the things, you can talk to people, and they'll, and they'll take time with you. Now, granted, if we're busy, We'll go wait on somebody that wants to buy something. Oh, but you want to talk for a while on Saturday? Yeah. We'll talk to you, too. But, you know, you're always available, too. And I think that that's also a difference. I, I know, you know, I'm, I come in here and, you know, you'll come up and we'll get a handshake or a hug on a birthday. And, there you, you know, are. even, you know, the mom and pops that come in here, you actually walk around. I saw this the other day. Yeah. This is why I'm okay. bringing this up because, yeah. you know, these are the little things yeah. that I recognize. But, you know, yeah, you're the guy that owns this place. But, you know, you walk from behind the counter, you know, bring the bag to him and, and you're, you, you put all the barriers away. You, oh, I will wait. I, I'm happy to wait on anybody. I, you know, I, I've been working the floor for 45 years. And I, I started working actively in 74. Um, I went to uh, graduate school at night and worked here during the day and decided after finishing graduate school, I'd much rather be a, a purveyor of goods than a lawyer. So, so well, you went to law school? Yeah, I finished law school in oh, no 78. Wonder. I got to watch so, myself. Yeah, 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 not hardly. <laughs> but um, so we went. So we went on it, and it, it started to grow from there. And probably our real growth spurt would have been the mid '80s. Was really when we started to take off and started to move much more in a direction uh, heavier camera department. We found we kind of found this was our niche, and um, probably a, a turning point for going national and finding national clients was when the Pan Am games were here in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. We met a lot of international people and we met people from newspapers from outside of Indianapolis. And that was a very big market for photo stores. And we started to pick up national accounts. We picked up Time Magazine, Sports Illustrated, um, lots of things which kind of shot us to another level to where we started to understand what a photo store could be and that there were many outside markets outside of your local selling market. And that served us very well as the internet businesses started to come along and understanding mail order came along and you, you actually you know, realized that to stay in business and be in business, we, we needed a, another metamorphosis from where we had been, and that was going to be online selling and mail order selling. At the time, it was mostly mail order, and then we moved it to online. About 1990, we made the decision to stop the catalog showroom business. We, we still had small appliances and you know, salad spinners and everything you, know, you wanted to notice. But um, we, we stopped in 1990, we started getting out of that business. It took about 18 months to get out of that product and that business. And we decided we're gonna concentrate on jewelry and concentrate on the camera business. You know, I know when I walked into your, your downtown location when I first got into town, um, it was like- Which is what year? 2002. Okay. And you it's still had, like, you know, you walk in the door and, you know, to your left and to your right was um, jewelry. Watches on the right. And, and it was like... Rings on the left. Robert's camera. Yeah. And, you know, it's and like... the cameras were in the back. Yeah, you had to yeah. actually pass the jewelry to Absolutely, get there. yeah. And I remember asking somebody something, like, what is this? And I said, well, as long as the, the, the parents are around, you know, go me some jewelry here and watches. And I, had a, I had a good guy who was a jeweler, and he worked for me, and, and my real thought was... As long as he wants to stay, I was going to have jewelry available. Um, but we could see that declining. And, and in about 2008, I think we made the decision to, to really get out of our jewelry business as well. He was, he was retiring, and I, the only other person that could handle it would have been me. Because I, I know jewelry, I can do it, 
I just don't want to do it. <laughs> At this point where you've gone and the retail business has kind of gone away and you've got the cameras part, how many other camera stores were in town? I mean, at that point, yeah, if I remember right, I where think it was Ritz still in there business? There was camera businesses and, all over the place. And I or, think you might have had Hoosier Photo. You've got, well, you know, everybody's in the business. You've got Target's in the business, Best Buy is in the business, now. Costco is in the business, um, you know, Walmart. I mean, even though you don't have the camera stores, you've got lots of people who are in competition. And then, frankly, online, you, you've got B&H, you've got Adorama, you've got, you've got tons of competition even though you don't have tons of brick and mortar competition. But the brick and mortars went away. I mean, you know, the brick and mortars died. You're the, like, We're well, in. I mean, you, you are in it now. I mean, there was one that just kind of hung on for a while and, you know, they're yeah. gone. We're it for a lot of reasons. And we, a lot of area. Yeah. I mean, hundreds of miles. Yeah. Well, well there, frankly, there's nobody in Chicago. No, not per, se. Not per se. Uh, I mean, in the Midwest, I mean, uh, closest you're going to come is to us with a store might be Cincinnati and probably is really Columbus, Ohio, or even Cleveland, Ohio. Um, but we adapted. We realized that a brick and mortar store alone wasn't going to do it. And I said in the mid 90s, I said, the guy who figures out this internet thing first wins. And the guy that figured it out best would be Amazon. The, yeah. In the camera business, the guy that figured it out second best would be B&H. Sure. Um, but it's, it, it was very important to realize that you're not going to live off your walk-in business alone. Um, while you need a brick and mortar establishment, you need to operate from somewhere. I mean, you really do. And you need to have many venues of, uh, of revenue. Now, when I started noticing and working with you, you had a lot of guys, what I would call are behind the curtain guys, um, you know, the, the Joes right, and so right. forth, that you know, are hiding in their little offices and they're on the phone. And it was always fun to come down and you, know, you kind of don't walk in their office, or, but you kind of lean against the doorway until they sort of signal you on, because they're always on the phone. And it's like, yeah, I'll take five of those, four of those, I'll beat that guy's price. And you know, it was, there's a, a lot of that that goes on. And these guys, and talking to Jody and, and talking to a number of photographers, for example, I would talk to Jody and I know he has relationships with a lot of these journalists and press places and you know, wildlife photographers and so forth. He's really developed a, a clientele, which yes, really essentially have. you have, but you know, he sort oh, of- Yeah, he has I, certainly spearheaded it and yeah, done a terrific and, job And with kept it. that segment really, really going. I know I worked uh, a couple times at the race with Sports uh, Illustrated and George Teeterman, you know, he and I partnered. And you know, he said, I, I just wait till I can come into Indianapolis and buy my stuff. And like, I, I, I bet- He was know, here like, the other day. You know, with, yeah. Before race week and yeah. everything. And a lot of guys say, yeah, I'm just going to come to Indy. If you, let me know when you're free because I'm, I'm going to go down and visit Paul, you know, uh, Bruce and uh, Roberts and get some stuff. And, and so they make trips out of their way to come here. Well, you know what's funny? You mentioned George Tiedemann. He was responsible for really helping us get noticed at Sports Illustrated yeah. and hooking us up with the John Beavers of the world, Neil Leifer. Uh, I mean, anybody who has been anybody in, in sports photography, he put us in touch with. And I, I, George, is a, George is a terrific guy and had an awful, single-handedly, I would say, of any individual customer, he really uh, pushed us in, onto a national spotlight. He had a lot to do with that. Uh, yeah, he became a good friend, you know, good old little Marine guy. I mean, he's only uh -huh. a little guy, but, yeah. you know, he, he just exudes that, that old kind of... Uh, style photographer that you knew. I mean, sure. you know, he, he worked his way up the ranks. He was a tough little guy. And, you know, he, the, the, he was loyal to a fault to the yep. people that were Absolutely. his friends. I mean, you know, I would get a call from him, hey, you want to shoot this with me? I need a second guy or do this. Oh, it was always a pleasure working with him because it was just the best experience. Oh, yeah. And you went, and went to a lot of good oh, venues. Oh, Kentucky was, Derby, oh, the Indy 500. so much fun. With uh, soccer. He loved to shoot oh, yeah. soccer, too. I mean, that, and, that was where he was big. And then when I was with Phase 1, I ended up selling him a Phase 1 system because he, he got tired of running around with all the gear and he started looking at sports photography as an art. And right. he went to the Olympics 
what was it, two Olympics ago or something, and did some amazing work. Yeah. While well, everybody's down in the field, he was up in the stands getting these great panoramas and just, well, you know, he just made art out of it. There's a guy named Rich Clarkson who has been in the sports business forever, and he runs sports workshops, and, and we get involved in that. But his big pitch in teaching this, and he's, he's been doing it for 60 years. I mean, he's, yeah. he's uh, old as the hills. Um, his big his big pitch is it isn't about anybody can take a picture it's about access it's about having the access to be in the right spot and George George did that George you know like you said everybody can be on the field they let George up in the top of the Georgia Dome I mean for the Olympics in, in 96 or you know shooting shooting from a venue where where most people can't get to and, and you'll get that great picture having access and that's you know that's yeah, he's a good guy but I, you know, I know he just he's so loyal to to robert's i mean he won't go anywhere else to, to purchase something he's a great guy he's, but, still, he's know, retired and he still uh, still calls you know uh, once a week and buys and and does good things he's, yeah, he's a good guy but i think that's what i see with whoever i've bumped into when i mention you know robert's and um, I've, I've always been amazed by that because it's something I've always believed in, especially now with what I'm doing with uh, the luminous landscape and right. you know what I did previously and you know our relationship previously when I'm, you know, I was more or less a vendor for you. Yeah, you for, I mean for, yeah. for a long, I, for you know, for as long as we were trying the back business. Yep. Yeah, it was good times. <laughs> yeah. So um, you, you've watched this business change and you've made some decisions you're what about mid 90s you said i think it was uh, early said? 90s we decided that we were going to get only uh jewelry and be in the uh in the photography business and anything to do with photography we didn't want to be in the computer business we didn't want to be in the software business anything to do with imaging hardware to do with imaging that was gonna that's at the time that was our direction we, we haven't even gotten into the digital age yet. I mean, we're mid-90s where the word digital is just beginning to make it into spell checkers. Right, right. You know, it's, that's, that's it's right. not quite there yet. You know, uh, we hit about 1999 and the digital time takes off. Now, somewhere, let's, let's kind of put things in perspective along the timeline. B&H became B&H when? About well, eight, B and H uh, became B and H online, or became online to the, to the they they started becoming a gorilla instead of. I would say they really about two thousand four five. So th what they did was start the ride the crest of the digital age. They spent money and they decided they were going to learn it, and they threw lots of people at it and they i mean they really had the ability to learn and begin to set it up to make it work but not not on the cheap i mean and, and even today you know you you've got there's a room with 200 people taking oh, orders i've and, been there oh, yeah okay. yeah and but, uh but, you know, but that was the change of things right. either you know folks like yourself had to start recognizing that you know, Amazon was coming into play, and you know, as we, you know, coined the phrase, it was time to start looking at reinventing yourself. If Absolutely, you were going to and survive. for us, we go, how does a, how to at the time we were a much smaller business, but we say, how does a, how's a twenty-five million dollar business a year, operate, and and survive in, the environment we see coming, and and part of what we did is we, we had a lot of commercial business. We were, uh, the newspaper business was, sure. was huge for us uh, and, and getting to be better. And, and that, that again was part of that learning curve through the 90s and we, and Jody was great at finding that business. And we found out in about 2008 to nine, that was a double-edged sword as well. <laughs> you know, when the newspaper business started to crash, we said, oh my gosh, Where's our newspaper business, and and uh, that was so good to us for so many years. So, um, but during that period of time, we started to niche into the publication business and and those things. Not so much studio, and 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 maybe we put too many eggs in one basket. But we were also learning about online. You know, we didn't have the the money to 
to throw at it, you know, unconditionally, like yeah. like uh, like a B and H did. We started with our foot, with our toe in the water, and we started learning it. And uh, and today, it's a good part of our business, and it's also been supplemented by the fact that there's third party selling out there through uh, Amazon Marketplace yeah. or Buy.com, and and we're finding. We're finding our niche in other ways. So we'll, we'll, we'll come into that in a second. Okay. So anyway, so now you've got your walk-ins, you, you've developed a, a, an internet presence, and right. that, that obviously is going to grow as we, we pull into that a little bit. Right, here. and good side niche businesses. And, as, and the side niche businesses with, you know... The, newspapers, newspapers, magazines, and that sort like of that. thing. And it's funny that, you know, and I know at one point uh, years ago, we talked about the pro business, I mean, you know, which was a significant amount of business in... Sure. in you know, from what I was experiencing at that time. Um, and you kind of just, you know, you didn't have the right person there, so you just never even tried to, to move into it. You stayed where you were good at, which I think... Exactly, and there were people out chasing the pro business, like Cal, you met. Yeah was somebody who put together a system of vans. Oh, and they went, pretty brilliant. Yeah, it? and they went and, and called on studios, and they would, they, they'd take their monitors, and they'd, they'd get, they, 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 they'd go in and turn the pro into a turnkey Yeah, well, I think, uh, you know business. what, I think well, we, we both know a, the gentleman that idea, did that, yeah. you know, the Peter, yeah. and uh, I think, you know, unfortunately, they were probably a good idea ahead of their time, and maybe management didn't quite see it, because um, right. I still think, you know, that model, if it was ever introduced again today, you know, could be significant for the different players that are here. The, I, the problem is there's not enough commercial photographers and studio well. photographers to, uh, to support that effort. But at the time, yeah, it, was, it was awesome. Oh, it was great. Peter had a great idea. Yeah, well, we, we're not here to talk oh, about yeah. Calumet because, well, they're not even here now. Right. I mean, right, that's another giant we don't see. Yep. And that uh, that went went by the wayside because they weren't changeable. No, you know, and it's kind of funny. I mean, you know, one of the things that you must have seen here, in you know, kind of taking a sidebar, is you know, talk about Kodak, for example. I mean, at one point, you had refrigerators full of Kodak sure. film. Sure. I mean, you had those big things in the back that slide open, and there were bricks of film. And you know, there's a company, for example. You know, you, you kept seeing things happening and you were adapting as you were rolling forward. Oh, we better get into this. Or we might have to look at this and, you know, let's slow this part but down and increase this there's part. There's a company that invented the digital SLR yet never capitalized on it. They, they, they probably invented it to kill digital so they could keep making film because film made them lots and lots of money and they could not see where digital could make the money because there was no film burn. Another company would be Polaroid yep. that said, hey, we don't, you know, this digital thing's happening, but it's not going to happen to us. And if we, if we don't make it happen, it's not going to happen. Well, we all know what, we all know what happened to, well, to Polaroid the, as well. And these will be, I think, business case models for many years to come. Sure. Um, uh, but then there's Fuji. You know, well, I think Fuji sort of got it. First off, Fuji was a thorn in Kodak's side right. during all that time, where Kodak was trying to keep them out of the country, and even though they built a plant in North Carolina and so forth, uh, it was quite a bit of competition. They were actually, it was funny, while they were, they were trying to fight off competition rather than try to make new customers. That's right, and, yeah. And I think that's something I've that's always found interesting. All the companies that I've ever witnessed to try to do business by bad mouthing the other guy never succeeded. The the secret was finding out how to keep your customers happy Absolutely. And, and bring the customers in. Absolutely. I mean, I I have great relationships with my company. The ones that are still in business, yeah. I have great relationships with. Um, I don't find you know I don't have the attitude, and I and I think the person that's going to exist shouldn't have the attitude. How do I put all my how do I put all my competition out of business? Yeah. The attitude is, you know, how do I continue to do business? I, and it isn't a question. I, I look at my competition, but my competition's good for me. It makes me better. It makes me, it, may, it gives, you know, not all my ideas are original. It gives me ideas. So, but, you know, you're, the ideas that you had. Now, I remember we went out to lunch or dinner somewhere five years ago or something, and you start talking about this used market, you know, the, uh, like, 
well, we're, when we're going to, like, we're dabbling in this thing. You saw something there. Tell me a little well, bit about what, you got the, the regular business and you sell a lot of new product, but there's something really happened on this used side of things for well, you, right? Well, we'd always bought used equipment, sold used equipment on a, on a much smaller level, much smaller, scale, much smaller I... level than, than today. But I had, we had declining margins. You have declining margins in the new business. And you're looking and saying, what, what else can we do that fits? And I had a gentleman that I've known for 20 years come to me and say, I know the used business and I can help you get deep into the used business. He had, he had been in it for 22 years with another company. And we, this was at a, uh, at a CES show. And, and I almost missed the appointment with this guy. I mean, it really, you talk about, you know, you know uh, kismet, but I, uh, over the course of uh, the last three years, this gentleman, we have taken this business and uh, my son-in-law, Corey, runs this business for us um, from just a small little used business where we buy equipment all over the country. We buy equipment in Japan. We are set up with about 14 people. We clean and test, shoot pictures of it. We sell it on eBay. We sell it on our website. And we've built this little business into, we're in our third year, and it's a $10 million business for us at good margins. Well, better margins uh, than you're probably getting Oh my myself. gosh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, new, new margins are uh, probably 10% if you, if you can. I mean, this is a 35 40% margin okay. business and is a... Uh, and this business has more gone global than even just national, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. It? This, I mean, we sell all over the world. I mean, that's... Um, but, and that's part of it's from eBay, part of it's off our website. We still do more business off the eBay portion, but, uh, but it's growing. And our, and our real goal is to get our website selling as much as we're selling on third-party markets, being a third-party market seller. Wow. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's been, it's been quite an incredible ride in the last... Three, three and a half years. We've been at it three and a half years. So if, you, if you're looking forward, in, uh, in the sense, obviously with all these digital cameras coming in, their life expectancy of a digital camera is a lot less than a film camera. We used to buy a oh, film yeah. camera in the film 70s camera last lasted 10 years. Forever, and yeah. like still shoot with it. All of yeah. a sudden, you know, you buy a, a Sony uh, six months ago, and, you know, last month it's like... Oh, God, it's, it's our things out of date already. Well, we've got a, we've got a saying: if it's on the retail floor for sale, it's probably it's probably out of date. Yeah, you know. So, but all this stuff is going to eventually turn over into used gear, and sure. you know, all, well, how, many, all, how many cameras do you buy a year? You know very much how much cameras I buy a year, and it's an awful yeah. lot. And you know, we have to turn those around. I mean, you know, the, the cameras I buy as new ones come available, we've got to move off and. You know, sure. take the next batch in because we shoot with all the stuff and we buy all the stuff that we use. As well, you know, yeah. I buy it from you. Yeah, and you want and you want to, you know, detail it, report on it. Yeah. And uh, but there's always something new. Uh, I find it's a remarkable time to to be in photography. Right. It's a very exciting because, right. you know, but it's very hard to make a decision. There are so many good products out. So let's talk about the. Uh, we we had we covered the Kodak guys, the film right. the film guys. There's Canon, Nikon, there's Fuji now. Where did Sony come from? Panasonic, Samsung? I mean, so they make refrigerators out there. You're seeing the CE guys get very at, very aggressive in the camera market. Yeah, at one time even General Electric was doing something. And, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing that this, this environment has changed. But what I'm finding interesting, and correct me if I'm wrong, okay, I watched Fuji transform themselves into... A real good camera company. I mean, they were film. You know, there there are a lot of things, mind you, based upon you know talking to the Fuji management. Uh, but and and the digital side plays a very small part of them. But it's one they take great pride in. Yeah, it's and, a, it's a uh, it's part of the face of the company. Yeah. But it's eleven percent of their total business. But it's yeah. it's a growing portion yeah. of their business apparently. Right. Right? And they've they've come out with a remarkable line of cameras. What the Fuji and has. lenses and X series yeah. lenses. I mean, they really figured it out. They put a roadmap out there, and they met their roadmap. And you know, Olympus, Olympus comes by and does the same thing with Micro Four Thirds. Remarkable right. camera gear. 
you know, their newest lenses, the pro lenses they're bringing out are really, yeah, they're, really they're good. They're awesome, yeah. And you now Samsung decides to come in with the NX1 with a spec sheet for a 28 megapixel camera, yeah. you know, that is just amazing with 4K recording capability. Wow, this, you know, these cameras are really getting good. Sony, nobody, like, Sony is making a big name for itself. They launched the cameras, don't have the lenses, but they're getting more lenses. They've already launched the second series. I have an ASIF system. I love it. Yeah. Uh, you know, in-body image stabilization, which kind of gives you a hint of where they're going. And they're the ones that are making these chips. You know, right. maybe we'll be putting a 50 megapixel chip into this tiny little camera, mirrorless. You know, and then it's mirrorless. And now we come into the Canon and Nikon guys. I mean, these are the big guys, and it doesn't seem like they're moving. Yes, they still have a grasp, but it, I know a lot of people... It doesn't seem like they're moving into the mirrorless age, into the smaller, lighter, yep. uh, where, where we're seeing the demand. Um, you know, you're still the bigger SLRs. Um, they do have a, a tremendous selection of lenses available, which keeps them in the game. They're, they've got, you know, big chip cameras, uh, they're, they're, they're professional cameras that are, you know, worker, user, user cameras are, are solid and strong. Um, but you don't see them moving into this mirrorless game. And you talk to them about it and they say, well, you know, it's still only 10% of the business, 12% of the business. Um, it's going to be a lot more of the business. Just yesterday, the CEO, I think it was, of Samsung said the photography business in three years will be mirrorless. And I he think was, he's right. He's pretty I, adamant about that. I think he's right. And I'm sure, you know, Nikon and Canon, they're, sure they're, they're no so. dummies. No, there there are, must but... be a lot going on. But, you know, Nikon's first foray into that business was the, uh, this Nikon 1 series camera. Very, you know, nice cameras, minimal sales. Um, Canon had the M series. Um, I wouldn't even say a nice camera. <laughs> it's uh, painful, it was it was uh, a camera that was that was a uh, stopgap. Maybe it was representative of a stopgap camera that they might be coming out with. But uh, um, but yeah, I mean you, you don't you don't see them yet out there with them, and and they certainly don't talk about it. No, and I put some sort of. You know, unless they've got some real cool system that they can dump lenses and cameras into a marketplace pretty quickly, you know, we're already in second and third generations of the other guys. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, granted, there's still some limitations. I mean, you know, but uh, the limitations were focus tracking and, and, and so forth. All of a sudden now, you know, Sony's improving on theirs and so are... Or, or Fuji and Olympus. I mean, the, the finders are getting much more quicker so that they almost give a real-time look. Plus, when you're looking at a finder, you get all the data, you know, the right. histogram ahead of time and all the information is there. It's, you know, I mean, I have my Nikons and I bought a lot of Nikon gear right. from you. I don't pick them up very often anymore at no, all. Yeah. And I only yeah. usually just because I feel sorry for them. I say, oh, it's a have, Sunday, I'll take you out. We have people <laughs> coming in and saying, my traditional SLR equipment is too heavy. I'm going on a trip. I want something light. I want something easy. And uh, are you finding the press market moving towards mirrorless? We don't see that yet. No. No, we're not seeing that. Um, although, gosh, the press market is also ch is changing so rapidly too. I mean, the the newspaper business, while they have, you know, they might have had. 12 staff photographers with, you know, with all the right equipment to shoot. Today, they're sending you out with a, uh, they're sending a reporter out with a, an iPhone and a selfie stick. I mean, to go, to go shoot. Really? Yeah, to go shoot. You know, I said, well, we figure as long as the reporter's out there, they can shoot the image as well as the, uh, as well as the photographer. But we're not, we're not finding them moving toward the mirrorless yet. Maybe when they're moving when they're using more video, you might find them going toward the well, mirrorless. Well, they're doing I mean, a lot of that now. I mean, obviously, we've watched our own Indianapolis Star go in a different direction recently. Sure. And, um, you know, videos are being inserted more in the websites these days. And, yeah, they're doing it with little iPhones and small cameras. But, they're, yeah, they're doing it as much with, uh, well, they've been doing it with a lot of video cameras, straight video cameras, too, which amazed me because you could do something like get a GH4, yeah. you've got a, you know, a, $1,700 camera 
that does great video. And you can just um, make a still yeah. out of it anytime yeah. you want at the same yeah, time. Yeah, and you could grab anything you needed. So where does this leave the the compact camera systems? I mean, a lot of talk now. At one the, point, the point, you used to have systems? the point and shoots. You used to have a shelves and shelves of those. I walk through your store now, there's and less. you know, there, there's hardly any. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, well. I'll tell you what. It's the uh, it's the phones. The phones have killed the the point and shoot business. As and rightly so. They're great. Oh. You know. Oh. Uh, you know. You, you can't stay. You can't poo poo them. So we're moving toward. We're looking for that person who wants better pictures than the phone, wants a little more zoom capabilities than the phone. And so that really starts with the small compacts, uh, the interchangeable lens compacts, and then moves up to the DSLRs. And, uh, and we'll see how that all fits. But you know, we're looking for the other products to sell, the, the stabilizers, um, the GoPro, uh, there's these great little gyro stabilizers out there, um, you know, and, and so we're looking, okay, these things aren't what we can sell anymore. What can we sell? What fits? There's still photography going on. Sure. And probably more pictures are being taken than ever. I, I thought that so how do, we, how do we fit and how do we market these new items with, with what the public wants? You can't, you can't tell them what they want. You can only supply what they're looking for and that and and again i mean you know when, when you talk back to the to the people who have failed the kodaks the polaroids um they thought they could create the demand and they were wrong they weren't big enough to do it well and you know i think now listening to what you've said you've actually f figured your business out where you don't have just you know one one basket you've got a lot of baskets with a lot of different eggs and you know you're Absolutely. adding to them all the time. We're so looking for, you're for new ways to do business all the time, and new and new streams of revenue. Well, it seems that you 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 certainly, as I used to think of businesses and and life in general, it's kind of waves. You know, one wave would hit the shore, the next one hits, and as long as you can more or less go back out and keep riding that wave in, and you seem to be doing that very well. You know, um, you you took this business over from your parents and. Who's taking it over right now with you? Well, I, my daughter and my son-in-law are very active. They've uh, both they uh, moved here from Chicago, and they've been here three and a half years, and they're doing a great job. And they're they will they're getting it. They're figuring it out. They're learning every day. Um, it's funny. My son-in-law originally said when he was going to come to work, he said it'll take me six months to get this figured out. So I mean, I could I could bring him up here today and say, so Corey, have you so you got it all figured out? He'd go, don't go anywhere, don't don't leave me. I want to, you know, I don't have it figured out yet. But uh, your your new store is great. I would encourage any of you, and we have an audience from around the world, obviously. That one of the things that I can say that I've always been amazed is. I don't usually call the big guy, and very seldom do I order from him. Well, I mean, there are some times I have to, but I know I can call down here, talk to Bruce, Jody, Absolutely. Phil, and I say, look, I need that new Fuji thing when it comes out, or I need this, and most of the time I get a phone, well, we actually have that, so come on down if you want to pick All it right. up, and the prices are competitive. Uh, you know, I, I think what I've, I've watched, and I've been with you in your office when somebody goes, hey, I know they're getting this price from somebody else, and yeah. Well, and you fumble through some papers or look on the computer screen and say, yep, we can do the same thing. And, you yeah, know, you, you work really hard to, to make sure that the, the business comes in. You're competitive. We you want to keep it here. And you if have we can sources. keep it here, we want to keep it here. Yeah, and you have sources. I mean, I'm, you know, you make a few phone calls and stuff shows up, which is I've always been amazed by that. And, uh, you know, the, the team, the staff, and the whole the, place. The trick on getting the stuff to show up? Is having paid for the stuff the last time they said it. <laughs> that's, that's always that's always a good rule. Yeah. But uh, yeah, um, yeah. Visit us. I know he called us Roberts Photo, but visit us at robertscamera.com. Roberts Camera. Well, you know, it's been Roberts Imaging. And we've we've had all kinds of Roberts. <laughs> it, help. It's Roberts. Okay, yeah. it's all we can say. But Bruce, I want to thank you. Thank for you very much. I appreciate letting it. Me come down here and uh, look forward to doing this doing a this. long time with you. Uh, we'll I do it. We'll do it some more. I'm not done. 
No? Uh-uh. I, uh, I'll, I'll keep this stuff we up. Have, we have this weekend. There you are. You'll find yeah. that we might have a project coming up where yeah. this bottle will be making a presence very Absolutely. soon. Absolutely. Uh, you'll hear more of us at Loomis Landscape working with Roberts in the future. We have uh, some interesting projects planned, especially as our new website comes online. And, uh, uh, you know, Bruce is the, the kind of guy and his staff is the kind of guys that just make it fun to do this. So. Um, well, you haven't heard the last of all of us together. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. It'll be a good time. Yep. Thanks very much. Thank you.